Hi everyone, my name is Matt and hopefully you remember me from Universal Lab. So today I'm here on Mars. So what are we talking about today? Well, we're going to be looking at Mars rovers and specifically in a minute you're going to be coding your own rover to have it drive around on Mars and do some science experiments. First things first, let's find out a little bit more about Mars and Mars rovers. So first things first, do you know how many rovers there are on Mars? Well actually there's only four of them, well there's only four that can move. You see we've landed lots of other things on Mars before but none of the other ones can move around the surface. This here is the NASA rover Curiosity taking a selfie of itself and all the ones that are moving around on Mars at the moment are all NASA missions such as Curiosity or Opportunity and there are more rovers set to go up to Mars in the near future. It's a lot more difficult to make something that can drive around on the surface of Mars for several reasons. First of all, there's a delay between the signal it takes that we send from Earth to Mars, and that on average is about 14 minutes, but at most it can be up to 22 minutes when Mars is further away from us. And what this means is you can't control a Mars rover like you could a remote control car. Because if you press forward, it will take up to 22 minutes for the rover to get that signal to move forward and then to move. So what scientists have to do is be very, very clever and they have to set up lots of instructions for the rover to do on its own, knowing that between 3 and 22 minutes later, the rover will do those actions itself. But even still, it's not as if scientists have a controller like a remote control car even with the delay. Instead they use computer code. So they use computer code to set instructions for the rover to do. These can be to do with moving, science experiments it can do, and also things like checking how much power it's got, operating the solar panels, and anything else that need to keep the Mars rovers operating. The other great thing about telling a rover what to do using computer code is that it can actually do all those operations while the scientists are asleep. So you don't have to have someone manning it 24 hours a day telling the rover what to do. You can just set up a lot of instructions and it'll do them on its own. And there are lots of things that scientists need to tell the rovers what to do. Again, they need to tell it how to move, they need to tell it when to do science operations, to check and collect power to keep operating. They also need to in some way make it do decisions. So if something happens the scientists can't predict, they need to have the rover be able to decide what to do itself so it can overcome any obstacles that it might face. Because there are lots of obstacles and difficulties on Mars that Mars rovers have to cope with. For example, there can be really uneven ground, there can be really big rocks and bits that go up and down the surface, as well as some soft sand that the rovers can get stuck on. There's also things like mountains and craters, which make it really hard for the rovers to navigate through. And dust storms as well. So dust storms can make it hard for the rovers to see where they're going, but also it can reduce the amount of solar panel they have, so often they have to shut down in those situations. All in all, it can be a really tricky time for Mars rovers navigating on the surface of Mars. But thankfully, using things like computer code can make it a lot easier for them and also for the scientists involved. In our next video, I'm going to run through the first activity in which you're going to be coding your own Mars rover to go around the surface of Mars. So check out that video, but otherwise, thank you very much for watching, and we'll see you guys soon.